Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. All right, listen, before we say anything, let me address. I do sound like Squidward. I know. I apologize. I've been fighting this like sinus infection thing. Uh, I'm finally doing better. I, I was struggling a week ago, but regardless, I'm doing a bit better. I just sound like Squidward. So just uh, ignore that for me. <laughs> but some of you might be wondering, Ryos, where the f have you been? Listen, listen, listen. Let me break it down for you. So when I first started uploading on YouTube, uh, 2019, whenever I first started uploading, I told myself, um, I have to upload every single week, right? Because I wanted to give it a fair chance. I didn't want to upload two or three videos and then go against it, whatever. So I decided, Hey, let's commit six to eight months, whatever I wanted up doing. And let's see how it goes. And it went really well. We built a small little family here. I know a lot of you guys really enjoyed the videos and found them helpful. I even found them helpful for myself. Just speaking out my own thoughts i found it very helpful and i enjoyed making content for you guys for sure but here's the downside all right i gotta film i gotta edit and i gotta upload these videos well <laughs> uploading is the easy part but i do have to film and edit them and that takes a long time especially me being a perfectionist i put a lot of time into those videos to try to make them as good as possible and that inherently affected my time in the studio to work on my own music. And if you know me, you know music is number one for me. Making music and music production in general is always gonna be my top priority. So when I felt that making videos was taking away from that time, and it was, I was struggling to meet deadlines, et cetera, et cetera. I decided it's time to take a break from YouTube. But listen, we're back now. And let me say this, going forward, I'm not gonna be uploading on YouTube every single week because that's just too taxing on me right now personally. Maybe in the future if I get a film crew or just someone to help me out with filming and editing, maybe that'll change. But for now, I'm not gonna be uploading every single week. However, I will be uploading as I see fit and I will definitely be uploading way more on TikTok and Instagram because that could be a little bit more fast paced content. So make sure to follow me there. I'm gonna pop them up on screen right now so you guys know where to go. All right, so with all that being said, let's hop into today's video. Let's break down Fool's Gold. Alrighty guys, so I have the project open here and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video. I got clips from Nino and Havoc and they're gonna explain a bit more on their end how things started. All right guys, so hopping right into it. Basically, I was introduced to Havoc through Revealed. Uh, Revealed A&R hit me up one day and said, hey, check out this track. Uh, what do you think about hopping on it? And as soon as I heard the track, uh, Nino's vocal was already there and I thought he absolutely killed it. So the vocal I fell in love with and Havoc's original demo that I heard, I thought the melody was really strong and it had a really cool like uh, rock or dark vibe. And I thought it'd be really interesting if I sort of, uh, you know, introduce my sound and combine it with that sort of vibe there. So I'm gonna show you guys the original demo that I received, compare it to the final, and then we'll start breaking it down in the project and cover some of the elements within the song. So first off, we have the final master here. We'll just go through some of the parts quick. Hero of heartless, gracious of godless, I'm fighting the truth in the dawn of our darkness. And now if we compare it to the original demo that I got from Havoc. Hero of heartless, gracious of godless, I'm fighting the truth in the dark. down the throne, all these are lies, all people die. We will stand for the sky. So as you could see, the production is a bit different. A lot of the sounds are replaced and or changed. However, all the melodies and chord progressions are more or less the same. I did change the melody a tiny bit, which I guess we could hop into it right now. And also a quick note, if you guys have never watched some of my other previous breakdowns before, uh, basically the way I produce personally is I like to produce all within one project with all the synths and stuff. And then I stem it all out and then I do a mix and master in a separate project. So this project is going to sound a bit different compared to the final master, but regardless, it's close enough, more or less the same. So these are the little pitch bends that I was talking about that I added to the melody. So if we go ahead and start breaking down the actual layers to this lead, we have quite a few more than I would typically use, but um, they all serve their own purpose. We start with the main lead. Uh, right here, just some reverb. These are all turned off. So it's just EQ, EQ, and reverb. All going to the lead group where I like to do majority of my processing. Uh, we have the Super Saw lead to give it that classic, you know, progressive house feel. 
Um, I added a whistle lead here. I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, all this stuff is turned off, but uh, this whistle lead just gives it a little bit more character, a little bit more of like a, a vibe or a space to the leads. Pretty interesting lead here. This is a pluck lead, more to give it transient. And I also like that like weird vocal effect that it added to the leads. Um, and then we have some edm -y leads, I like to call them. Basically like the lead to like tremor or something. Uh, just a normal silent lead. I said normal silent lead, but it's just the silent lead. Um, and then I have this sort of like glass plucky sort of sound, which is very subtle. But you can see that the frequency this occupies, it's like the low mid range. And this really is like the body of the synth. And I think because, you know, it's this weird glass pluck sort of sound that's filtered down. I don't know. It just gave the leads a little bit of a, a cool texture in the low mid range that I liked personally. Um, All together, they sound like this. Oh, by the way, this washi lead is off on purpose. I wanted up not using it. If we cover some of the processing that's going on here, if I mute everything, doesn't sound as cool. Uh, we could run through it quickly. Again, this is not mixed, so I wound up doing more stuff later. But uh, anyway, we have a sidechain off the rip. We have a novel tech character, pretty cool plugin. We have a Saturn doing some Saturn stuff, saturating. Uh, we have an EQ going on here, boosting the mids only. This is an underrated feature, guys. Make sure you're boosting the mono frequency or the mid or the mid side band. Uh, because you want to make sure that the leads, yeah, you want them to be wide, but you also want them to be powerful in the middle. Otherwise, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel like your leads are super, oh, a wild Bailey has appeared again. <laughs> Bailey, what are you doing? You want to say hi to YouTube? All right, we're going to just keep moving on, folks. But yeah, anyway, uh, experiment with the mid-side function of EQing and try boosting the low mid to mid-range frequency of synths in the mono band. You might be happy with those results. Uh, we have a little bit more reverb here. Um, just, just a taste, you know, uh, filter for the buildups and stuff. We have an imager to make the leads a little bit more wider or a lot of bit more wider. And it's funny enough, I wound up doing more widening, uh, in the mix sound stage because I just, they weren't sounding right. And that's actually a quick tip or trick that I can give you guys fast. Um, basically just do whatever it takes to get the result that you're after, right? Like I know there's a lot of guys and they say, oh, we'll only use this many layers or this many plugins, or you should use a lot of plugins or whatever. Honestly, personally, I do whatever it takes to get to the sound that I'm after. Usually I have a good idea of what I'm uh, looking for or trying to get. So in this case, you know, I'm using seven leads with a lot of processing. Sometimes it's the opposite. I'm using three leads with minimal processing. It just depends on how the track's going, how it's flowing in the studio. Um, but yeah, don't feel afraid to just do whatever it takes to get to that result that you want. Nice little motivational speech, but anyway. Oh, I also forgot to add that I changed this part of the melody as well. It goes down right here instead of up. Um, I introduced that. It matches the vocal because the vocal goes down as well. Sounds pretty cool. So what else could we talk about? We have some chords in the drop. Piano's off. Yeah, the piano's off. So here's what wound up happening. So I found that there was just a lot of stuff going on in this drop. So what I decided to do was make it more of a bass heavy drop or bass dominant drop and have the chords as a supporting feature rather than the opposite. In Progressive House, it kind of goes one way or another. You have the bass supporting the chords and adding onto that and you really hear the chords or it's the opposite where you really hear the bass um, and you have the chords more of a supporting factor. Bailey's just loving this tutorial. Give a thumbs up for Bailey, will you? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so nothing really going on here. The piano is not happening. The strings are just, you know, some strings. Where are they from? They're from contact. I think I just added a note by accident. I did. Uh, just normal contact strings. These are like really just basic sounds here. It's the uh, Serum Lead Millennium Saw Patch from Singular Sounds, um, which is a really great pack. Go check it out. One of my favorites. But other than that, like very basic stuff. But what we can talk about is the bass, because I feel like the bass in this drop really is what makes it cool or makes it drive, really, is the best way to describe it. So we have this talking bass here. So this is what makes it really cool, in my opinion, and this is one of my favorite parts about the track. 
So look how diverse this bass movement is. So, you know, the chord progression is A, C sharp, B, F sharp, like as far as the bass line goes. Um, that's the bass line of the chord progression. But you can see here, I did these um, like jump ups from octave to octave. Also pitch bends, so I could show you the pitch bends. So anyway, really cool stuff. Um, how did I process this? So this is a very like typical silent or serum sort of bass. It's nothing crazy. However, the processing is what makes it look look cool. Uh, it does look cool, does it? Uh, nah, sound cool. So first off, we have this transgate from KHS. Uh, this is what gives it that rhythm. You could achieve this with LFO too. It's fairly simple. If we go to the next thing, we have an EQ. Cutting out some of the lows because we're going to have other bass layers supporting those lows. We have the wow filter. Really cool plugin. It gives it that sort of vowely or like ow sort of sound. Then we have Serum FX. Serum FX is an awesome plugin. In this case, I'm only using the Hyper Dimension tab. Giving a little bit more space, making it a bit wider. Then we have Focus One, uh, one of my absolute favorite plugins for a while now. Um, I have a little bit of widening going on and a little bit of drive. Then we have some sidechain and another EQ. So for the next layer, we have a clean roar bass, I like to call it. Um, this is occupying that low mid range, giving that bass a warm feeling, as well as doing the audible top end together with the talking bass. See, without it, it's just not like fat enough. You know what I'm saying? Like in all seriousness, with the drop, it just wasn't giving that driving factor that I was uh, looking for. So together with the clean roar bass and the talking bass, you get a really nice fat top bass. Next up, we have a reese bass and a sub bass. The reese bass is really to just give the sub a little bit more harmonics and movement. Uh, the sub is really for that low, low frequency, but really you could just kind of use one layer. In this case, I decided to use two, but anyways, altogether, the bass is sound like this. So next up, let's talk about the drums in the drop. They sound like this. So pretty basic stuff. But anyway, that sort of breaks down the drop. I mean, other than that, we have like some vocal effects that we got from Nino. I made this little vocal drone, just like an echo that plays out. We have some just effects. We have a crowd, white noise, crash, very simple stuff. But yeah, other than that, that's really the basis for the drop. Let me mute these two. All right, guys, so let's discuss the break now. So first off, we have the main ARP. And again, uh, Havoc made all these melodies. I didn't really change any of the melodies um, except for in that drop that we spoke about. Yeah, the break is more or less the same. I just added and replaced uh, the sounds. So we have the ARP here, which is a really cool, like mysterious sound. Next up, we have, uh, this is from Havoc. It's like a nice like piano, uh, warm pad sort of sound and I added another layer to it, which is actually pretty similar. But together, it just adds a lot of body, which I really liked. These are, oh, okay, I bounced these down to audio. So this is like um, a piano I added. Very simple stuff. Um, I added this electric guitar. really fits the vibe of the track you know it's a very like spacious dark mysterious sort of vibe going on there i felt like these uh elements really complement it and personally i put a lot of emphasis into my breakdowns i feel like a lot of people neglect them and just focus on the drop uh, i'm sort of the opposite i actually really really love working on breaks and i think it really sets up the drop like if you have a great break and a great drop the drop's gonna feel even better because you're sort of setting it up for success in a way where I find personally, if I'm listening to a song that doesn't have a cool break um, and has a great drop, it just doesn't really do it for me, you know? But anyway, we have some strings here. 
So that's more of like a droning high string sound. We have another electric guitar layer. Next up, we have this choir that Havoc sent to me that I thought was really, really cool. So this is bounce down to audio as well, but I did add some filtering to it to give it that like underwater vibe. Next up, we have the atmosphere of the break. So we have these ambient brass sounds. Also audio, but this basically just a lot of reverb and filtering. Uh, we have some ambiance from Havoc. These sounds add a lot to this style of a song because this is like a dark, you know, festival EDM song. A lot of space, a lot of like uh, worldliness or like atmosphere to it. So having these sounds really give it that sense of space. Very important. Next up, we have a backing saw. This is just another like droning sort of synth to give this, uh, this section a bit more energy. And then we have two more sort of ambient sounds. I like to use that sound a lot. Um, some of you guys might recognize that. The second break is pretty much the same thing. I did add this uh, progressive pad, which it's from Nexus. Yeah, it's the Beautiful Minds preset from Seven Skies. And then I process it with some EQ. Don't ask me why I'm still using Pro-Q2 when Pro-Q3 is superior. Um, focus one, very simple stuff, guys. And then I have this sort of string run from Kashmir, probably, yep. And this is just a cool little detail that I added just for the second break. Oh my goodness, forgot to mute this, sorry. Here we go. If we talk about the drums and the breakdown quick, in this case, Havoc sent me over a really cool clock and tambourine rolls. And then I decided to add a acoustic kick and a stadium clap really gives it that sort of festival energy. This is the rhythm I'm talking about guys. It's really important to have movement with your drums. So we have the shakers here panning from left to right and a rod. And then we have some like uh, accent pieces. We have this clap field that goes into a hey chant. That's pretty cool. Together, it sounds like this. Uh, second break, the only thing I added was just like tonal perk. Just like kind of like an ambient sound. The build we could talk about fast, uh, it's just, you know, a big fat EDM snare with uh, a faster snare underneath for some rhythm. They both filter up. Well, actually, only the fast snare filters up. And then we have a sort of trap snare that comes in for more rhythm. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, I could talk about the basses too. Forgot to do that. So break, we have the Ryo signature. Love me some Reese basses. Pretty much use it in every single song. I feel like that's a big part of my sound. Love me some Reese basses. Um, but anyway, boom, Reese bass all into audio. This is from Serum, by the way, all these sub bass. Actually, this is from Silent. This is um big sub from Cashmere's Silent Bank. I really like that sub for breaks. Uh, and then I have like this really like dramatic uh, brass from Nexus. All together. Now we can jump back to the buildup. So we have the drop leads filtering in, uh, which sound like this. We have the talking bass from the drop filtering in. Uh, we have the build snares, which I already showed you. And then we have some of the break instruments. I did introduce a new build bass which is just a another respace, but with more low end. And then we have a sublifter, which is basically just a sub bass that rises from octave to octave um, in the buildup in those last four bars. We could also talk about the effects in the buildup. So personally, the way I approach risers and sweeps in the buildup and stuff, uh, basically I like to have three different categories. I like to have a tonal sweep, a like normal white noisy sort of sweep, 
and a rhythmic riser of some sort. So because the tonal riser was clashing with the vocal too much, I opted for this crowd riser here, which is a nice in between, I feel like. Adds a lot of energy. And then we have the creepy sweep, which I like to use from time to time. And then this is the rhythmic riser. Adds a lot of energy. So yeah, guys, that's the breakdown of how Fool's Gold was produced. Um, I'm not gonna bother showing you guys the mix down project because realistically, it's very similar. It's just some EQing and imaging, and we can get into that in another video. But yeah, in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Make sure you're staying tuned because we have Havoc and Nino Lucarelli, and they're gonna break down how they made Fool's Gold on their end. Before we cut to them, I just wanna say thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe again if you missed it in the intro. I am gonna be uploading on YouTube from time to time when I can, so make sure to hit that notification bell so that you're notified, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more fast-paced content there. Hope you guys have a great day. Havoc and Nino, take it away. Yo, what's up? My name is Dirk from Havoc and I'm going to show you how we made our track Fool's Gold together with Riles. And we started this project here in this save file. It's only um, one break and one drop, R really simple. So um, let me show you the chords first, since we usually start with the chords when we, when we make a track. So nothing really special, just the piano uh, over here, selected, and um, you know with the chords we start we start an idea, we start a feeling. So um, then we go um, with a with a lead with a melody on top of the chords. like this and we had a vocal from splice which was just a placeholder so we could get a little bit of a feeling how it would sound with uh, with a vocal we have an arp which gives a little bit of an atmosphere in this track it's made in serum have some FX's over here but not all the um, samples are loading because this project was made in an, another older MacBook um, somehow we lost some files uh, same for the drums I guess not everything is loading and FX So to create more depth in your breaks, we, we have some samples um, made called Space. And they're just in the background of, um, of our breakdowns. So Fool's Gold uh, is a song that I wrote with my good friend Chad Cole. I remember the day that we wrote it, I had gotten a vocal request. So I asked Chad if he wanted to take a stab at writing it with me. And we wanted to get some inspiration for a topic because we felt the song sounded really epic. The instrumental sounded really epic as is. So we went. We ended up checking out the trailer for Assassin's Creed Vikings, which is a super epic game of basically just Vikings beating the crap out of each other. And it's what led us to writing the lyrics the way that we did. And my favorite song to come out of it, or my favorite lyric to come out of the song was Tear Down the Throne, The Fool's Gold. Um, to me that means, you know, taking away an aspect of something or someone that rules you that is much like fool's gold and that it's, it's superficial and you can break it down. So, I hope you enjoy fool's gold.